Welcome back! My name is Baller Scuba. This is Video Games Over Time! We are still in 1985. Today, we're going to talk about soccer. Soccer, much like the other sports we have talked about, may not be the first thing that comes to mind when talking about the history of video games. However, the history of video games and the history of sports are often linked in ways that are not always apparent from the outside. Having a basic understanding of how soccer is played will help with the understanding of the history of video games, especially when we start playing video games based on the sport. We will start with the history of soccer. Soccer, also known as football or association football, has a history that is difficult to fully describe. Like American football, soccer is derived from medieval ball games and English public school games. Figuring out exactly when the sport separated from the other versions to become its own game is difficult to track. It is said that during the early to mid 1800s, several different rules were starting to be created at several schools throughout England. Efforts were made over the years to unify the different rules from the different schools and independent clubs that formed around the sport. It was in 1863 that representatives from several different football clubs met in London to form the Football Association, or FA, the world's first official football body. The FA held six different meetings, attempting to get the nation's schools to join the association, but most of those early efforts failed. As a part of those meetings, rules were published by the FA through some tough negotiation. The first competition under their rules was held in 1867. In 1871 and 1872, the FA held their first FA Cup. By 1888, the first football league was formed, simply named the Football League. However, professional football players were banned in both England and Scotland, where the game had become popular in the 1870s and 1880s. The Football Association met in 1885 to loosen the restrictions on professional players. The sport began to gain popularity worldwide in the mid to late 1800s. Associations would start across continental Europe, South America, and the United States. By the start of the 20th century, it was apparent that a single governing body would be needed to oversee all the different leagues and associations. It is said that the English Football Association had attempted to create something, but had made no progress. Instead, seven other European countries banded together to form the Fédération Internationale de Football Association, or FIFA, in Paris on May 21st, 1904. FIFA would hold its first international competition in 1906, but this was met with little success. FIFA would hold its next tournament as part of the 1908 Olympics in London, which was far more successful. Other nations outside Europe, including South Africa, Argentina, and the United States, would join FIFA from 1909 through 1913. World War I would then prove to be a stumbling block for FIFA, as the countries of the United Kingdom withdrew from international competitions, unwilling to compete against their World War enemies. However, the league would continue. South America would continue to push the sport forward in the meantime. The first continental championship, the South American Copa America, was held in 1916. To capitalize on the popularity, FIFA would hold its first premier competition, the FIFA World Cup, in Uruguay in 1930. This was played mostly by countries from the Americas, with much of Europe not seeming to take an interest. The FIFA World Cup would become a tradition, with competition scheduled every four years. Much of Europe would join the FIFA World Cup in the next competition in 1934. However, the 1942 and 1946 FIFA World Cups were cancelled due to World War II. After World War II in 1946, the British countries returned to FIFA. Once all countries were back competing, it was not long before the FIFA World Cup would become the world's biggest sporting event. Other continental championships would emerge, including the AFC Asian Cup in 1956, the African Cup of Nations in 1957, and the European Championship in 1960. Soccer had become incredibly popular, easily the world's most popular sport. 
by 1985, dozens of nations have their own leagues and their own governing bodies. There are even championship leagues for some of the teams that win their home league. Nations routinely train their best players for international tournaments around the world. The most prestigious international tournament is still the FIFA World Cup, held once every four years. The last FIFA World Cup was in 1982, won by Italy. The next will be in 1986. That is a very brief history of soccer through 1985. Keep in mind that there are hundreds, if not thousands, of organizations, teams, and people that helped contribute to the history of the sport that we do not have time to get into here. Each nation has a rich history in the sport, and the people in those nations tend to be proud of their soccer history. Soccer is taken very seriously by many people around the world, to the point that even my use of the standard American name for the sport, soccer, is fairly controversial. With the history of the sport briefly told, let's take a look at how the game is played. Soccer is governed by a set of rules known as the laws of the game, first established in 1863 and continually updated ever since. Soccer is a team sport, with 11 players from each team on the field at once. These teams will compete with a round soccer ball or football. The field itself, or pitch, is a rectangular flat field with two boxes on either side filled with a net. This box is known as the goal. There are two white rectangles on the pitch near the goal. The smaller one is the goal area, extending six yards, five and a half meters, from either goal post and six yards onto the field. The larger rectangle is the penalty area, sometimes known as the box. The penalty area stretches 18 yards, 16 and a half meters, from either goal post, then 18 yards onto the field. There's a spot in the penalty box known as the penalty mark. It is in the very center of the goal, 12 yards, 11 meters, onto the pitch. There is also a penalty arc on the outside of the penalty box that stretches 10 yards, 9.15 meters, from the penalty mark. In the center of the pitch, there is a halfway line with a center mark in the middle and a center circle. The halfway line marks the exact center of the pitch. The center circle stretches 10 yards around the center mark. The team's ultimate goal is to get the ball into the other team's goal on the opposite side of the field. This is known as scoring a goal. Whoever has more goals at the end of the game, typically consisting of two 45-minute halves, will win the game. Most players on the field are not allowed to touch the ball with their hands or arms during play. The exception to this would be a special player that is positioned as a defender near his team's goal, known as the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper can touch the ball with any part of their body. Other players will typically move the ball in one of three ways. The players can dribble the ball, lightly kicking it as they move along the field to try to retain control of the ball for themselves. The players can kick the ball to another teammate as a pass, or the players can kick the ball at the goal in an attempt to score a goal, known as shooting or taking a shot. Players on the team without the ball, typically seen as defenders, can try to regain control of the ball by intercepting a pass or by sliding into the ball, known as tackling. There are lots of restrictions on how to tackle in soccer. Typically speaking, tackling is only okay if the defender makes a play on the ball. Only minimal contact with the opposing player is typically allowed. Play starts with the ball being placed on the center mark. All players must be on their side of the pitch to start. The team that is awarded the ball will then kick the ball to get started. The opposing team must be outside the center circle for the first kick. Should the ball go out of bounds, the ball will be thrown or kicked back into play depending on where it exited the field and who touched it last. Should the ball go out one of the sides of the field without a goal, a player from the team that did not touch it last will be allowed to throw the ball back onto the field. 
Should the ball go out one of the sides of the field with a goal, known as the goal line, how the ball returns to the field depends on which team touched it last. If the goalkeeper on that side's team touched the ball last, the ball is placed on the corner and the other team will kick the ball back into play. This is known as a corner kick and teams will often have set plays for how to play them. If the goalkeeper on that side's team did not touch the ball last, the goalkeeper will be given the ball to kick back into play from the goal area. This is known as a free kick and will often be among the longest kicks in the game. Soccer is a free-flowing game. The ball spends most of its time in play and the clock for the game never stops. The officials, known as referees, will often keep track of how much time the ball is not spent in play. At the end of a half, the referee will add time to the clock to make up for penalty or injury time, known as additional time. The referee will then wait for a good time to stop the game instead of relying on the clock. Outside of the goalkeeper, none of the other players will hold official positions according to the rules. However, as the game and its strategies have developed, other positions have become commonplace in the sport. Teams will typically use strikers or forwards, who specialize in scoring goals, midfielders, who tend to specialize in getting the ball away from their opponents and passing the ball to the forwards, and defenders, who specialize in stopping their opponents from scoring. A team's strategy will often change the number of strikers, defenders, and midfielders they use in a given match. One major rule of the game is for players that are offside. The rules state that a player is in an offside position if any part of their body, except hands and arms, are in the opponent's half of the pitch and closer to the opponent's goal line than the second last opponent, meaning two defensive players, including the goalkeeper, should be closer to the goal line than anyone on the offensive team. Otherwise, the player is in an offside position. Being offside by itself is not an issue. It becomes an issue if the player becomes involved in active play, typically if the player receives a pass. At the time that the pass is initiated, when the ball is kicked, if the player that receives the ball was in an offside position, then the team is guilty of an offside offense. The other team will be given the ball and awarded an indirect free kick. When a player commits a rule infraction, there are a few main ways an official can handle it. For minor infractions, the other team will receive an indirect free kick, where the ball is dropped and the ball may be kicked freely, but a shot may not be attempted. For more serious infractions, a direct free kick may be given to the other team. This is a ball that is dropped and may be kicked freely, including as a shot on goal. If a foul that is usually punished by a direct free kick happens in the offending player's penalty area, then the other team is awarded a penalty kick. In a penalty kick, the ball is dropped onto the penalty mark and a player gets a shot at the goal with no one but the goalkeeper to try to stop them. All other players must stay outside the penalty box and the penalty arc during this time. For harsher rule infractions, referees may use cards on the players. A yellow card is a warning to the player. The other card is a red card, which dismisses the player from the game. If a player is dismissed from the game, the team is not allowed to substitute a replacement player into the game. If a player receives two yellow cards in a single game, that becomes a red card. If not dismissed due to a red card, players can be substituted for during a stopping point in the game. But once they are removed, players cannot re-enter the game. As a result, this typically only happens during injury or later in the game when the team could use a fresh player. Those are the basic rules of soccer. While the rules of the game may not be as complicated as some of the other team sports we have covered, that is often seen as a positive by its fans. The game is often seen as beautiful for its simplicity. Just like any other sport, soccer has had its controversies over the years. Various institutions behind the game have been accused and guilty of corruption, 
exploitation, racism, and organized crime. Some people behind the game have been convicted of serious offenses, almost too many to count. Once again, it is important to not glorify sports players and realize that they do have full lives off the field that are often hidden from the public eye. In the history of video games, soccer has played a behind-the-scenes role in video games for years. There have been soccer games for the arcades, for computers, and for consoles. Because of the sport's simplicity compared to other sports, game designers have often turned to it for sports titles on the platforms. While these games did achieve some success, none have truly broken through to becoming a standout game on its own. That is, until 1985. That will do it for the story of soccer for now. My name is Baller Scuba. This has been Video Games Over Time. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in our next video when we go for the cup.